Welcome again. We're at John chapter 11 right now. This is we're reading uh, verses 45 through to 54. Anger over the resurrection of Lazarus. Can you imagine? I mean, and it happens today, okay? When you do good works in the name of the Lord, when there are mighty works and miracles that happen, and even when you preach good, I mean, you know, people get angry. Even if they shouldn't get angry, they still get angry. You know, in this situation, the people were angry because of what Jesus did. Now, in context now, don't forget we just came from the passage about the death and resurrection of Lazarus. So let's get right into this. This is verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what Jesus did believed in him. That's great. We need a lot more of that today. We need a lot more of the Jews believing in Jesus today. So we need a lot more of the power of God in, in our lives and, and working through us, just like how Jesus did. And we need to be in line with the Torah, just like how Jesus was. How can you win over the Jews if you're not in line with the Torah? Okay, that's one of the Christian's greatest faults today. They're not in line with the Torah. You know, some of you would say, well, how can, we, how can you be in line with the Torah? It, it, it's impossible. No, it's not, okay? There are many people who lived in line, who lived righteous, uh, you know, according to the standards of the Torah. There are a lot of people in the scriptures that were called righteous. Again, like, look, look at uh, Luke chapter 1, you know, the, the parents of John the Baptist. It says that they lived blamelessly obeying all the commands of God. They obeyed all the commands of God. Not some. What does your Bible say? It says in my Bible, all the commands of God they obeyed. Keep in mind, a lot of the commands of God don't apply to everybody, okay? Again, I'll say this, I said this over and over again, I'll say it again. You know, the Jews say that there are 613 commands, so, you know, so be it. But of those 613 commands, only a fraction of those 613 commands actually uh, apply to you, okay? So don't get thrown off when you say, well, 613 laws, how can everybody, you know, how can anybody obey 613 of God's laws? Hey, like I said, I've heard that in the United States alone, there are so many laws that lawyers don't even know the exact number. I've heard it estimated in the United States alone, there are over, now they don't even know exactly how much because it's just, you can't even count them, but they estimate over 4 million laws, 4 million laws. And most Christians today in the States would say, yeah, I'm a law abiding citizen. You know, I'm, a, you know, it's my duty, you know, to abide by the law of the land. Well, you say that you abide by all 4 plus million of men's laws, but you can't abide by just a few of God's laws? Something wrong with that picture. Verse 46, but some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. The chief priests, therefore, and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, what are we doing? For this man does many signs. If we leave him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But a certain one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is advantageous for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation not perish. Now, he didn't say this of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but that he might also gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day forward, they took counsel that they might put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but departed from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim. He stayed there with his disciples. Now, I know some of you would, would have trouble with maybe some Christians hiding out, you know, from authorities and this kind of thing, you know, saying, well, you know, you should be bold enough to, to be persecuted for the Lord. But hey, you know what? There's a time to, to hide, you know. There's a time to say, hey, you know what? 
I am not going to be arrested this time, okay? I'm not going to be arrested. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go under the radar. Verse 55. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand. Many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought for Jesus and spoke with one another as they stood in the temple. What do you think? That he isn't coming to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had commanded that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it, that they might seize him. So they had a warrant out for his arrest. So they had, if it was today, they would have pictures of Jesus on the poles. If you see this man, call this number. So that concludes our reading of John chapter 11. Once again, thanks again for listening and may God bless you in your search for the truth. And as you pray, as you read the scriptures, may God give you revelation that your eyes may be open to see things that you've never seen before, to know the truth that you've never known before. And call upon him and he promises you that he will show you great and mighty things. Thanks again.